Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. In this video, we'll try to solve three inverse Laplace transform problems as shown here. So the first problem, uh, as you can see from here, is F1s is equal to 4 divided by s plus 1 multiplied by s plus 3. So we'll first take help of partial fraction equation. So we'll write it in this form of k1 and k3, k2 divided by the two denominator terms. Now, uh, Mr. Alexander he uses symbols A, B, C, D, and Mr. Thomas in his books has used symbol k1, k2, k3. So it doesn't matter really what this symbol is. But only thing we have to keep in mind that uh, we have to determine these unknowns. We'll take help of residue method and of several methods available, residue method is uh, slightly easier to understand. The technique here is that whichever variable we want to find, so k1 we want to find here, we have to multiply the f term, fs, with the denominator. So look here, we want to find k1, so we're multiplying f1s with the denominator of k1, and then we put a condition, uh, in this case s is equal to minus 1, and where from we get minus 1? If you put this term or the denominator term equal to 0, s plus 1 equal to 0 means s is equal to minus 1. So this is how we get the condition. And now we'll simplify it further. We'll put the value of f1s uh, from the question. And then we cancel the common terms. So canceling the common terms, we get this term. And now we plug in the value of s is equal to minus 1. So we get the answer is equal to 2. So k1 is equal to 2. Similarly, we can find k2. Now in this case, to find k2, we have to multiply by s plus 3. So we are multiplying f1s by s plus 3. And the condition will also change s plus 3 is equal to 0 means s is equal to minus 3 so that becomes the condition and again plugging in the value of f1s cancelling the like terms then putting the value of s is equal to minus 3 and solving we get k2 is equal to minus 2. So F1s can now be written in terms of partial fraction as 2 divided by s plus 1, k1 is 2 here, and plus k2 is minus 2, so minus 2 divided by s plus 3. Okay, so we were here and now we'll uh, find the inverse Laplace transform. And if you recall from the table which is given in every book, uh, this is the time domain side and this is the Laplace domain side. Since we are going to find, uh, we have the Laplace terms and we need to find the time domain. So we'll look from here, from right to left. If you have any term which is similar to 1 divided by s plus 1, then in time domain, sorry, s plus a, then in time domain it will become e raised to the power minus a t u t. So in our case we have s plus 1, so this will become e raised to the power minus 1 t. And here it is s plus 3, so it will become e raised to the power minus 3 t and u t with both of them. So let's see, let's write. So f1 s, which was in the Laplace domain, will become in time domain f1 t this 2 on the numerator uh, comes here 
and this term s plus 1 will be e raised to the power minus 1t or minus t ut and this minus comes here for minus 2 and e raised to the power minus 3t because here a is uh, 3. So e raised to the power minus 3t ut and we can take ut common. So this is the final answer that we get for problem number A. Okay, let's see problem number B. This is slightly different from the one we solved earlier. In that one, uh, only this portion, or similar to this portion, was there. Now, in this case, we have a term e raised to the power minus 5s. So, what to do with this? Uh, let's take help of the table. If you look uh, the table for Fourier, uh, Laplace uh, function fs, the time domain representation is ft. But if that fs is multiplied by e raised to the power minus as, then the time domain function will be shifted by minus a. So instead of ft, it will be ft minus a and ut will become ut minus 1. Actually, you should have uh, uh, ut here also. Anyway, so this we have to keep in mind that this function e raised to the power minus a s or in our case e raised to the power minus 5 s has the effect of just shifting the answer by minus a or minus 5 in this case. So first of all, we'll just solve this part and then we'll do the shifting. Okay, uh, so we, for convenience, we are naming this one as F2 double dash S and we'll solve this first. So as we did before, we'll take partial fraction of this function F2 double dash S this is the partial fraction k1 k2 terms we take help of the residue method to find value of k1 and k2 as explained earlier so k1 will be this function f2s f2s multiplied by its denominator and the uh, condition will be that s is equal to minus 1 from here s plus one is equal to zero so s is equal to minus one as explained earlier now plug in in the value of f2 double dash s from here and simplifying the like terms so it will be 2s over s plus 3 plugging in the value minus 1 so it will be minus 2 divided by minus 1 plus 3 and is equal to minus 1. And similarly, we can find k2. Just exactly the same procedure. In this case now s, uh, the condition is s is equal to minus 3 from here. So k2 is 3. So f2 dash s becomes as shown here. Okay, so we were here and now we'll uh, take the inverse Laplace transform of this to go into the time domain. Taking help of the same table, uh, we'll find the time domain representation. So f2 da double dash t or the time domain part of it will become minus 1 e raised to the power minus 1 t u t plus 3 e raised to the power minus 3 t u t and now if you remember we have to find out um, or we were given f2 s so we need to find f 2t not f2 double dash t so what we have to do we have now f2 double dash s 
is multiplied by e raised to the power minus 5s and as we discussed earlier that this term just means shifting of the time function so we'll shift the time function here by minus 5 from here you can see we're just shifting so look what we have done e raised to the power minus t has been shifted as e raised to the power minus t minus 5 similarly uh, this t is also shifted and ut is also shifted so we have actually taken common both the ut's so this is the final answer and the last question is uh, again similar the only difference is that we have s plus 2 terms now compare the two we have s plus 2 in the numerator now keep in mind that we are only concerned with the denominator uh, terms uh, numerator should not bother us it, its value will automatically come when we solve so just as we did before we write this in terms of uh, the partial fraction k1 and k2 and we solve for k1 exactly same technique that we did earlier multiply for k1 we are multiplying by s plus 1 fs3 putting the value of fs3 now and cancelling the like terms putting the condition s is equal to minus 2 we get k1 is equal to 2 and similarly we can find k2 is equal to 2 also in this case so with k1 and k2 known our function f3s will become 2 divided by s plus 1 plus 2 divided by s plus 3 so we were here and now we'll take the inverse Laplace transform same technique so it will be 2 times for this it will be e raised to the power minus t u t and for this it will be 2 e raised to the power minus 3 t u t and we taking u t common this will become the final answer so I hope this gives you uh, a fairly good idea as to how to solve different types of inverse Laplace problems thank you